uh, before I start, uh, before I, I uh, go to say more and to develop the, the idea, I just to, to make a, sh a short introduction for those who are not uh, very uh, close to those uh, um, ideas and issues about the generally civil society and working in civil society. So my presentation all will be like a case study about what and how those issues, gender issues and feminism uh, can be, uh, it's like multi-dimensional uh, problem or, or the issue uh, in the theoretical regard, which we already saw and we are aware of, but also as uh, as well as in the, the practical uh, part of the story, because when we uh, don't have ever have so much um, still uh, still uh, so many un uncertain uh, things about the theoretical background. Then also it's directly reflecting uh, on the practical uh, or on, on the field when we are working. So in the civil society, uh, we have a huge diversity of uh, actors which uh, which are acting there. One of them is FBOs or faith-based organizations who are trying to uh, also make some contributions. As you know, these uh, faith-based organizations, uh, they have a lot of, uh, uh, also a lot of uh, or, uh, kinds of very uh, di diversity in the, in, in the fields which they are trying to do, especially in U USA, as it's uh, developed somehow as a, as a brand there and uh, many of them are working for many years. Uh, some of them are working on, as development organizations uh, and uh, inspired by uh, different religions. Uh, some of them in the field of interfaith or multi-faith based organizations. Some of them are s service providing and delivering of services. Uh, some of those FBOs are in advocacy, develop, uh, developing policies and uh, practices. Also, uh, some of those organizations are uh, engaged with the questions of gender and so many uh, other fields. I just want to say that inside the civil society, we have a part, a part of the civil society who, who are uh, trying to, to prove that uh, being motivated with religion values, with uh, any of religions, is also can be uh, as well as uh, motivated and uh, the equally, uh, should be equally treated on this uh, regard. Uh, and uh, that uh, faith-based organizations proved uh, throughout the history and today a big, um, um, if we can say, the values which uh, they produced and the uh, activities and services which they produced are uh, more and more appreciated, appreciated uh, from the society as we see results. Uh, also, uh, women are engaged in all these different ranges of organizations uh, and uh, according to their, of course, uh, uh, interests and uh, they are in involved in all of them. But especially what I want to say that, uh, of course, uh, many of women are engaged also in this, this specific uh, faith-based organization who are dealing with the gender issues, advocacy policies and so on. But what I want today uh, to, um, to speak about and to discuss and question together with you is the uh, women, uh, Muslim women agencies, uh, women's agency, uh, which are, uh, we can say, somehow a uh, new appearance on the screen, if can, we can say. It was, we can say the history no, not more than <clears throat> 15 or 20 years. Uh, and it uh, generally started to be uh, to appear uh, as a, a real effort uh, of the grassroots uh, level of Muslim women who really needed a space, who needed something to do about themselves. Exactly this story we can uh, you can connect with uh, the sister uh, who spoke about uh, her way of thinking that at certain point women are feeling uh, they, they need something. And because of uh, there is no, uh, not really uh, very well uh, solved the space for women, not defined, and not only in the organizational uh, regard, but also in the ordinary, uh, as we will see and discuss later, uh, in the ceremonies, in the mosques, 
in all these even religious uh, things, uh, women are not e are not enough available, are not enough there. Uh, so, um, as a result of all this, uh, usually uh, Muslim women are trying to do something. Uh, some of them are gathering some groups around. Uh, some of them are uh, creating s a certain environment to start. Sometimes. Uh, unregistered, sometimes it is uh, official, unofficial, whatever, but the kind of social work which can gather themselves, compensate this uh, space. Uh, also, uh, Muslim women are also searching in this regard for some opportunities to give them a space to discuss a common uh, issues which all of them are uh, not having some answers or also the opportunity for education, the opportunity also to help others, to serve others, sometimes to show this uh, um, serving community or other things. So they are finding it suitable to, to connect with and network with each other. So that is usually the way how those agencies and organizations are starting. Uh, also, uh, As you, as you can see, I put uh, different points which, uh, from my perspective of view, I see how it starts usually, as I'm following a lot of those uh, organizations for, for a long time. All of those uh, factors and uh, points are sometimes uh, shown or, or the, the cause why, why, why we organize ourselves in that way. Uh, also, uh, We will come back to this uh, to this question again. Uh, what I okay. Um, the first I, I just want to, to give you here I, I mentioned some 15 organizations on the European level, which are not the only ones, as only in the European Forum of Muslim Women we have now uh, about 21 organizations who are networked uh, together on the European level only. I mentioned some of those organizations uh, here, and only 15 of them. Just to give you an idea that uh, so different uh, different countries, European countries, which uh, women are organized in the separate women associations or organizations or bodies or forums or ligas or centers. Uh, and uh, I, can, uh, I can say just shortly, because I'm coming for, from one of those organizations, so I put for you a few slides just to inspire you, to give you idea, because all other organizations are generally somehow about these issues, uh, more or less, depending on their own capacities, facilities, the time, how they, they arrange to, uh, to utilize or to uh, to use uh, environment uh, depending on the legal uh, structures and uh, environment in their countries. But generally, for example, on the Nahlas uh, case, uh, I put here what is our general idea and uh, all about, uh, like a vision, which we are about. This, uh, we, <coughs> we are inspired by the values of Islam and believes it serves the whole community as aims to be a link between people who identify themselves with these values and others who together with them make up the society. Um, some goals. It is just example how we defined it, as we really put it uh, or left it to be very wide, uh, as we have a very, very wide range of the programs and activities who are also uh, available for all uh, non-Muslim uh, women and, and Muslim women. And this is the example that we really want to <clears throat> to be available for all and our services, education is opened uh, regardless of the, any uh, ethnic or other regard. Uh, but also, as you can see for the third uh, point, to raise awareness about the role of religion in civil society and the importance of establishing dialogue between citizens, different NGOs, religious communities and government institutions. To research theoretically and empirically issues important for women, their rights, social engagement, religion and identity in contemporary civil societies, beside all other activities which we, um, we have. So here you can see uh, main activities and most of those organizations have uh, some or share with us some of these fields, more or less. Some of them, only few of these, some of them even more, but generally I put the activities which more of those women associations are sharing 
or somehow have uh, something in this field. Um, this education, personal and pro professional development, which is also a huge area also. Uh, education in and about the faith. Many of those organizations are trying to, to give their own um, um, somehow um, to, to do something about this, to educate women more about understanding of the religion, uh, of some texts of this, and also as we see today, such discussions like we had today, uh, how to understand better as some of those organizations are translating some books, some of them are issuing or researching, like we have also a research center, so we already published uh, some of this research about uh, understanding uh, of position of Muslim women in Islam and uh, in connection with contemporary issues. Also developing uh, creativity and skills, mentoring, counseling, networking, which is uh, also a huge field, which we have different activities inside the society, research and uh, publishing projects, round tables and conferences, youth programs, different services, like we have also fitness library, counseling office and other things, which is also available for all uh, members of the society, not only for, mus for Muslim women. Uh, on the Nahas case study, uh, I have a reason, later you will uh, understand why I'm presenting it now for you, just to give you idea that those organizations are doing job on the field, they are effective on that level. Uh, for example, in Nahlas case in Bosnia, uh, we developed until now over 40 educational programs and trainings uh, which are uh, with the copyright of our center and with, with the relation and connections with the Ministry of Education, which are uh, now we are of the five, uh, five organizations in Bosnia who are creating the law about education for adults. Uh, we have yearly, uh, yearly about 5,000 women who are using and attending our trainings and education per year. And until now, we, we, we are this year celebrating 15 years of work. We opened two educational centers uh, so far, and we are now under construction of the third one in the northern city. Uh, we are supporting uh, similar women's initiatives in other cities of Bosnia. Uh, which are small and, of course, with smaller capacities, but we want to develop these uh, feelings of the social responsibility on these local levels. Uh, now, now, our activities, as I mentioned, are open to all women, regardless of their ethnic or religious affiliation, social origin or political affiliation. Uh, now, I just wanted to give you an idea that uh, as Nahla in Bosnia, as well as some other organizations all over the Europe and other uh, part of the world, uh, world, but I'm following the situation in Europe, so I'm presenting today the situation there. Uh, we, developed, uh, we developed some kind, of course, uh, based on the different reasons who really led us to this. One of those definitely was that uh, on the grassroots level, we didn't have facilities which we needed. We didn't have services which we needed as women. We didn't have anybody who really cares about it. And really, we, we started to think that we need to do something about ourselves. So we started as a really uh, completely simultaneous uh, initiatives from that, uh, the, uh, the grassroots, completely grassroots level as, as we started 15 years ago. <coughs> And I know another initiative, uh, which, which I mentioned on the slide, uh, that were, had very similar stories. So uh, I'm now wondering, as a result of not having a real clear policy about our um, orientation, about gender issues, about the woman position in all this, uh, also um, as a, one of the questions who is coming to my mind is, and the questions which I will uh, now want to also question with you together is why those phenomena is uh, so present in Muslim communities and is no, we don't have similar uh, initiatives in the Christian or uh, Orthodox or also Jewish uh, practice and uh, communities. Uh, this phenomena all over the world uh, is um, most likely to be presented in Muslim communities and I'm uh, one of the reasons who came, which came to my mind is that really in Muslim communities we don't have this uh, 
uh, women are not obliged to attend ceremonies. Uh, they are, as, as we presented before, or maybe some of the uh, presenters all over these days mentioned it, it, is, uh, uh, it can be by choice and uh, it's, uh, a woman is not uh, forbidden to attend. If we don't, of course, we, we need to take into consideration that many places doesn't have enough space for women or at least not adequate, uh, uh, which women needs. But it's not uh, prohibited to come to any of these ceremonies. But also in many countries like Bosnia, for example, it's not, it's not common at all for women to come to the to mosque. For example, on Juma, uh, the uh, Friday prayer and the uh, Eid, uh, Eid al-Fitr and Adha, is not at all. Uh, there is no place for women because the places uh, all our mosques are full with uh, men, so women are not attending at all. Uh, maybe that can be one of the reasons where we, where we started to separate from each other. And in which point? Because other, uh, if we can say in other religions, we, we have a Sunday, which they are coming together to the ceremonies, they are sharing the same, hearing the same instructions, the same lectures, uh, then uh, have the family day, uh, coming with children together. So maybe they connect somehow, so they don't feel, they don't need such a kind of organiza organizations to be uh, to be separated or to be alone because they can uh, deal with this together. Uh, as I mentioned here, also not enough space for women. Uh, space, of course, I'm saying not only physical space, but many times it's also a question about physical space. But many times, generally, uh, Men are there in all the decision-making bodies, in all the uh, boards which are there uh, discussing the questions about the mosque, the, how it will be solved, uh, the, these committees which are for any, any kind of organizations. So even if women are attending uh, for some ceremonies, it's usually uh, not, not the space for her to really express her real needs or not only uh, theoretically to express it, but really to find a solution how to uh, to adapt the space to, to have some of these facilities. So uh, another question which I had is that um, with uh, did that kind of organizing, I wanted, I intentionally wanted to show for you some of results even that uh, our organization by itself is really giving a huge results on the local uh, level, on the Bosnian space and also on the Balkan as whole, as we now initiated a lot of initiatives in Serbia, in Sanjak, in Kosovo, as well as in Croatia. So only that example, I'm saying about that example, I show for you some of the results. Uh, the smaller part, but I wanted to say that uh, even that those organizations uh, show that they really had a uh, uh, can be part of solution, but also there is another part of the story which is uh, putting us now in the solution that we are uh, questioning ourselves. Are women with those organizations giving up the common Muslim space? That means that, uh, okay, we didn't find a space there, we went alone, organized ourselves, and we are now satisfied with this, so we completely left the space, common space, which is not normal and not natural, but that is not something what we really want to reach at the end. Uh, our intention in the beginning was not to be separated, to show that we are separated, that we are better or worse than each other. We really just organized ourselves because we didn't have alternative. We wanted to have some. We wanted to, to have it. So now there are many uh, negative uh, if we can say, it's, it can uh, seems for you very strange that I'm coming from such organization and I organized and established that organization 15 years ago and now I'm in front of uh, the, the, the big question in front of myself, what is the final result of this? Are we really leaving now space, common space, which we all of us need to be together, to solve problems together with this alternative which we have now? Uh, so. Uh, the first, I think that this is threatening uh, the disappearance of common perspective between men and women in understanding, common understanding of things. Because we have women organizations and we are there in those organizations understanding things in our way. 
men are staying in uh, common places in mosques and other things they have uh, Friday uh, Juma prayer and preaches they have a different uh, insights or different uh, lectures so we are listening for different authorities and different masader or uh, how we, we say it Dif so it will it will not help us to come together at the end it only may help us to go further in this this is one perspective another one is uh, having uh, parallel institutions like this is getting all women, from my experience on European level and Bosnian level especially, that all, all really qualified women and women who really have something to give are going to those organizations and they are putting their free time, voluntary time, uh, their professional uh, uh, capacities and other things in those organizations. So mosques and other common places are staying more and more without those capacities. Uh, also, in those separate spaces, whatever we did, uh, so huge results which we really, really have on the local levels, but our voice is not here, still there in the place of the um, decision, decision making or the place which we want to be seen because they are always uh, pointing out, uh -huh, they are from those organizations, so okay, let them speak whatever, but we are not on the place of decision making. What is also for me very negative, uh, negative aspect of, of this. Uh, also one of the question uh, which I'm uh, address, uh, should be addressed and I'm now just uh, putting it here in front of all of us to think about, in regard of the gender issues. I mean, this is all about the picture, how things can, can come, uh, how things can, can be done from a different perspective, of, from different sides. Uh, even when we are fighting for the, some rights or, or the rereading re of the text of the gender issues and other things, we need always to be careful not to, we need always to be careful not to go uh, too far and not to forget the uh, final aim uh, in in light of the Makas du Sharia as we are all the time speaking about it what is the the final result of all this and how it will come with how it it can turn out um, as I uh, questioned here is uh, can this be a justification for the community for not having common actions because we are already separated, so um, when uh, somebody is uh, when somebody is um, sending or uh, critics or raising critics about not having women inside the mosques or any activities or boards or even the uh, even the like somebody questioned it in the first or second day here why there are no women in those panel they will point out, say, okay, they have so many organizations, there are organizations, so they are there. So that is the like justification of this position. Uh, also, uh, this can uh, bring for women, uh, like, uh, half-satisfied position that at least they, they are feeling they have something, but is that something what we want to reach at the end? Is that something what we are uh, going to uh, is that enough to be really satisfied? Uh, also, again, having a risk of different understanding of common values which we need to have. Uh, and uh, having a risk of education and developing only women's uh, capacities. Uh, we have this experience in Bosnian society as uh, our centers, which we opened uh, so far, are really educating a huge number of women, different, I mean, uh, Muslim and non-Muslim women, but uh, most of them, for example, in capital, which is a more than 80% uh, of the population are Muslims, so most of women who are coming are really Muslim women. Uh, some of them are uh, religious uh, practicing women, some of them not, and, but uh, in different positions. But we have now the case that uh, that is not parallelly educated in the same time. So we have women who is getting higher education, who are have, have different qualities, who are always uh, attending different uh, skills and education, 
and going higher on that, but uh, uh, the rest of the male members of their families are not following the same steps and always asking where we can attend the same or similar things, even that their, their brothers or fathers or husbands many times. So we can have a problems that some, when we, those capacities uh, are not uh, equal or similar, we also have a problems which will come back to the family again. Also, can those organizations be better used and involved in solving common issues and challenges? Uh, like some issues should be, uh, they cannot be uh, solved or discussed separately, or if we can discuss about it, uh, the results will be very strange or at least not acceptable. Like family issues, which we need to have some common points, some agreements about the issues. Some of them have been presented today. Advocacy and policy making, uh, also how to engage ourselves together to have some, uh, to have more impact, to have some uh, advocacy uh, and policy uh, policy systems, uh, how to influence on our societies in those issues and regard uh, women and men are not important. We should all together to work on those issues. Also ethics, another uh, topic which should be done together cannot be separated at all. So the reality, which, what I wanted to present for you shortly here, is that uh, Muslim women, FBOs, are existing, existing as results of needs of women who organize themselves, as I presented. Uh, those organizations are successful and active in many fields uh, of local communities, and they start to be important social factor. I can say it because we as an organization have, uh, as I told you, not only in members, but also as a social impact now, anybody in Bosnian uh, media, uh, mainstream media, uh, private TV stations and other things, they, are, they will not hold any of the real um, programs uh, about women generally and about Muslim women without to invite us and uh, they are attending without to send for them invitation for most of our programs if they are open for the public they are taking uh, parts of it uh, that is example of the which we really wanted it was one of our intention really to send the message that muslim women uh, practically uh, can be different from what they uh, they read in the theory or what they want to understand from the theory that they are not oppressed there is a lot of space that they can work they can uh, uh, give uh, additional values for the society in the common fields of other, not only in the theoretical or Islamic uh, topics, but also in, in all fields of the social work and other things. Uh, so those organizations also are dealing with gender issues. What is also the problem, uh, problematic for us, that we didn't start most of those organizations with that intention, that really we didn't organize ourselves, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, with this aim to deal with the gender issues as such and or to be to be like that but but by passing uh, of time and uh, keeping and going on with those activities uh, even though that we didn't start with these those gender issues are always questioning uh, even from ourselves from our members or from the media so we are involved in those issues without many times those organizations doesn't have capacities or didn't prepare for that or even didn't establish for that, but isn't, uh, are in the position to give certain answer about those issues. So that also can be one of the challenges which are in front of us and can be a really a serious problem in future if we don't, don't find a, a solution. So Muslim communities need solution and responses to the challenges of the changing world. Uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, building all, all these stories on the gender challenges which we have in front of us in, on theoretical uh, part of the story, also the same problem is on the practical side. So uh, all those organizations also started as a kind of a response on these challenges. That the Muslim women uh, felt that on the theoretical level there is no, no reason why they are nowhere. Uh, so, okay, they, they, they saw that nothing is 
it seems to be solved for them, so they went and tried to do something about it. And the results which we have now are those organizations who are more or less successful on this level. Uh, it's very, very uh, the, uh, different from country to country, from place to place. But uh, generally, I, I feel that the same idea of organizing is by itself is some kind of success. Also, one of the outcomes is more visibility and engagement of Muslim women in civil society and organizing them in separate women's organizations. Position and role of those organizations can be used and as temporary with a long-term goal to unite all efforts of men and women. What is, real, uh, what is our real aim, what is our real challenge now is that uh, what I would like to see as a result of all these efforts which have been done from ourselves as organization, from other organizations, uh, that really it opened door uh, for the common actions and for a dialogue and to somehow open the minds in many uh, male members of the community that really separating actions cannot be a long-term aim and cannot solve the problem at the end. It can be temporary, it's good, and giving results for now. But I hope that with those organizations, we will or we should force them somehow to rethink the positions, to rethink the, the situation and see. Of course, those organizations can stay, and there are a huge uh, range of the activities and facilities which can continue and go on. But somehow to... Uh, I would like to see that those initiatives encouraged both male and female from the community to start thinking that certain issues, very important issues for our community should be solved together and the starting point should be mosque, mosques. Mosques are the empty of women and until if we don't bring a woman again to the mosque, we can't, we can't start. I think that should be common, uh, I mean, starting point. So my conclusion is, as it stated above, efforts and contributions from both men and women are important, but only with common ground and united efforts we can have strong individuals, stable families, face current challenges and build better <coughs> communities. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Sakhia, for this very insightful um, lecture. So what I conclude is that we men should become feminist also. Yes. <laughs> so... We just showed you how, how it can be done. Yes. <laughs> so I will take the question for the brother that was raising his hand 10 minutes before the end of the lecture, <laughs> so he can take the mic. Thanks a lot, to hear. Um, I would actually like to know your perspective um, on a dynamic which I experience in Germany in the in organizations where I'm active. For example, the Muslim Youth Organization or Zahnräder, a social entrepreneurship organization. So um, um, organizations which are outside of the mosques but are um, accessible for female and male. Uh, and what I see in those organizations is that, um, uh, subhanAllah and alhamdulillah, that uh, our sisters are dominating those organizations by far in terms of number, uh, of, uh, in terms of quality, in terms of their uh, contribution and their um, intellectual and educational background to the extent that those organizations struggle to have men in the boards, you know. Actually, they still have, most of the times, they still have men in the boards uh, just for the reason that they say, okay, they are more senior 
maybe the, the sisters shy away from uh, taking strong leadership roles, but those organizations, I don't know, Muslim youth organization and social, so in those both organizations I would say 65% of members are female and they are uh, definitely uh, lead, driving the dynamics. So to the extent that in those organizations we actually have the difficulty to promote uh, the role of brothers. And we fear that, um, uh, that in, in a few years from now that the whole idea of um, civil engagement will lack um, through the a minor contribution of Muslim men. So how do you see this factor, which we haven't discussed maybe in your, um, and in the previous lecture, uh, how do you see this uh, driving the discussion? Uh, okay, uh, I think that I will have two points, uh, Nizar, on your uh, if uh, so-called question or maybe comment more to say. Uh, the first one is that uh, I have the same impressions and my only answer which I could find so far is that really men, we as a human being, beings are usually acting only when we should do, when we are really forced to do something generally. Uh, that, that really is something which is very deep, uh, deep need in us. I think that men really didn't have it, a Muslim, Muslim male didn't have it until now because they had all floors opened, uh, all the places opened, so they never felt the need to self-organize, to have different organizations, to be active there, because it's enough for them. They have some dynamics, they have the, some meetings, they, they have their gatherings, weekly gatherings, they have a prayer or uh, some activities, even some sport activities inside the mosque or football or whatever. So. <clears throat> They, they don't feel such a need for that kind of uh, uh, networking. The another uh, maybe reason, which also it's something what was in my mind all over this uh, past time, which I also noticed the same, is that women generally by, they, by their nature are closer to networking and generally that is the energy or the capital which generally women maybe has more uh, that is also the kind of satisfaction, even with, if they don't have uh, some programs which will be uh, held, but the same uh, position or the, the feelings of networking or socializing uh, in that way is maybe stronger in the, on the female side. That can be one of the uh, another points. But uh, another uh, part of your comment is also interesting that <clears throat> I would like to add that I really support and strongly support uh, organizing working in civil society as the NGOs or different kind of associations and organizations uh, with this uh, motivated, uh, which are motivated or inspired by the religious values in our case in Islamic values because I really believe that we have so much to add to the social life so much to add our values to, to bring it, as Dr. Tarik many times is saying, uh, really to add something for the communities. So uh, the dealing or and acting uh, through the NGOs is uh, much easier than the religious communities. Uh, so religious com com communities have its uh, very important role and should stay there and work their work. But NGOs, which are faith-based and uh, uh, related or motivated or inspired by religion, by Islam in this case, also has their, their, role, their role in the social life because they are uh, much more flexible. They have the approach to different grants, uh, cooperation networkings with another uh, NGOs, which are differently motivated with the common grounds you know, on some questions. Uh, social questions, environment, uh, even uh, gender issues, uh, so so many uh, education, so many programs. So uh, through these networks, we really introduce to each other, and there is maybe also the part of the uh, the story that we as Muslims are uh, anyhow we we are asked to to introduce to other others or to open these doors or خلقناكم شو بين القبائل اللي تعرفوا uh, that we created you to uh, the differences and different groups to to introduce to each other. 
so this flexibility of uh, working inside the NGO is uh, really by me. I, I support it. I see the even if we solve this question, uh, I think that FBOs should stay active in civil society in, on European level and should be part of real uh, change and positive change in their societies. But the the question uh, of uh, men and women are really really something what we all together should think how to revise the uh, or uh, I, um, I don't know how to say re reaction um, uh, review maybe uh, review the the positions uh, and in this common uh, common question especially very important main uh, and uh, huge questions which are understanding our posi uh, the first underst understanding the spirituality of, of Islam uh, then understanding our, our positions some questions which are really should be taught together and we need the effort of all of us but to be on common place to be together uh, studied and uh, and then we can have also separated activities I, I don't say that even those organizations will uh, will cut or will stop with their activities no they will continue and be more effective the problem is that those organizations now are used as a um, tabrir, uh, uh, yeah as a justification for the uh, not doing anything together so okay you have it now go on that's good for us not to think about it not to not to have the problem with uh, my wife because when she's asking me to do something I will say okay go there into that organization so you have space and not doing anything about it that is not solution that is my problem that now after we started to be very active in the communities we we see the opposite of the the aim which we were trying to reach Nizar, I hope that uh, I somehow, or, or there is still a question which you wanted to direct in. Um, I, I yeah, I think it. maybe this factor, I mean, um, what I see that in the last couple of years, um, the role of, um, the neglected role of female was, uh, of course, in, in the focus of um, driving um, those uh, I would say just one, one, one Muslim organizations, but uh, to the extent that um, they have catched up and even surpassed um, in terms of being, uh, being active, being educated, and now I'm actually fearing that, at least in Germany, what I see, mm -hmm. Muslim brothers don't catch yes. up, you know? Yes. So, I mean, they are just like, I mean, in the mosque, there's a shell of old man leadership without, without okay. values and without vision. And the females are taking over. And uh, I mean, I'm, it's great. But at the same time, I hope that we can also okay. push now the brothers again. Uh, no, not to say anything from this position. The young brothers. I, female, I, mean, but really I, I can just cite for Dr. Tariq's uh, word from the, the first day when he told and really I'm completely convinced that, as I can see, our problem are not women, our problem are really men. Muslim uh, society's problem today are men, in that regard, mm. which you mentioned just now. Yeah. So I think we'll have the time to take one more question, or maybe two. Uh, for so yeah. I think the sister was... Uh, we will have discussion after you. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Just I'm, I don't know, like maybe most of the sisters here or brothers, they came from the West and you have this NGO about feminism and gender. It's, I think it's more spread in the West than in the East. Um, I think in the East we have like uh, this feminism and gender, it started from the West more. Uh, in the Eastern parts from where I came and from my experiences, uh, these movements about NGO, about regarding feminism, they, when they started, they started by uh, women uh, who have problems with religion or let's say with the religious leaders. And uh, most of them, they have this secular uh, 
mentality like we have to separate religion from this from life and uh, when they start to establish such organization um, they they direct not the religious community like not the 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 let's say the muslim woman who practiced the religion it was like directed towards the the uh, the young generation who would like just to get rid of religion to be uh, modern and to to be like because if everything in the uh, Masjid, let, let's say, or the religious leaders say it's haram for women to do this and this. So we will open this, this uh, organization and just you can't do anything and just leave. So I think the context is different. And uh, this organization start, uh, for example, in the Eastern part, like uh, to have a conflict uh, with the religious community and with the religious leaders and sometimes with the mashaykh and sheikhs and even scholars. And uh, I think even in, in the Friday speeches and everything, they would advise like the men not to send their, you know, women like to, to such organization because this organization, they are westernized and they want to apply the western values and all of this. So by the end, we have conflict and struggle in the societies between what we have now. It's, it, it, I think it's completely different context. And uh, like, for example, for me, if I have a problem or about gender issue, I, I don't think it would be like a good idea to go to this NGO. And sometimes also they would not go to the religious leaders. So people, they become Lost. And even when you mention sometimes, even among the educated women, they don't know what's this feminism about. They don't want, they don't know what's this gender about issues. Even when you, uh, like for example, you say, what's, what's this about? And some of them, even the Muslim women in our community, they are convinced uh, we are okay. Uh, Muslim, uh, Islam gives all our rights and we are living happy and that's it. And they don't even want to change. And even like, for, for example, if I start to discuss this, for example, with my mother or grandmother, say, they, they, don't, they don't comprehend all the issues. So I think, um, I, I don't know, like when you, enter, it's, it's good, but it's completely different context. It's completely like, I, I don't know like how, and I, I was also th uh, thinking about like starting to establish this NGO, but not only to have female, but you have male and female. Because by the end, I say, yeah, to keep the balance, because as you mentioned, by the end, we need both of them. When we have, for example, family, sh family issues, we can't discuss this uh, without female, without male. And as Muslims, we want the Islamic reference, like what r our religion say about certain issues, if we want to keep it Islamic in a way. I just need a small comment because uh, I don't know if I got your point well, but I, I feel that you uh, maybe didn't uh, put it in the right, uh, right way as I wanted to present. The things uh, and the uh, groups or organizations who you are speaking about was not what I was speaking about. It's completely third story, which I didn't want to open today because it's, there's not enough time. It's not my... Uh, my point of view today. Uh, so the group of organizations and women groups who are organized and uh, the networked for that cause are completely different story of what I was presenting. Those groups and those centers and organizations are those who are giving real services, education and uh, uh, different services for a directly Muslim women without theoretical background. Uh, only by time now we are put in, in position to have certain positions. So we are now forced or involved in the stories. It's not that uh, background. We usually, as far as I know, for example, our case and uh, the case of other organizations who, which I mentioned on European level, have very good relations with Islamic communities. Uh, with the, for example, in, in Bosnia, we have wonderful relations with the Meshikha, which, uh, which is the main authority for Bosnians and for Balkan. Uh, they are supposing a part kind of like support because they have don't have any activities for women there always and that is the negative point but they don't have anything they're pointing to us okay you have nahla so everything is there uh, yeah we put that many things are there but we didn't want to to have that way at the end 
So the story which you are saying about you are right in the position that those groups have very, uh, very many times negative effects on the same woman because the same women are affecting with that big, because we, when we have isolated the groups who are um, somehow uh, um, somehow claim, claiming themselves, they, they, they have a new approach or new understanding of Islam and everything and really many times they are putting good efforts and a lot of those stories are okay but maybe 20 or 30 percent of that is problematic. So because of that they are also um, having a, a negative effects uh, on the same uh, Muslim women who will be forbidden to uh, from their families or husbands to go to those places as I know also these stories or oh, don't go there because they are feminists even they don't know what does it mean at all uh, but uh, something what is uh, frightening them and then uh, the Muslim Muslim women in those positions they don't know what to do but uh, that was really not a story which I touched in my presentation uh, I was saying about initiatives, organizations and associations, associations who are really socially very effective, very useful, giving results, but have been organized from grassroots level from the real needs for women to have a space and place. And uh, they are usually cooperating and dealing with Islamic communities, but that is not... Uh, uh, Mm, that, that have the another part of story if we continue with that uh, what at the end we will reach which, which place okay now time is over but just for gender equality I'll give the, the last word to Dr. Shafeti thank you very much <laughs> uh, well I don't know if I'm on the side of male and female all female today so uh, I want to thank Sophia first for the extraordinary insightful presentation. I really learned a lot from from your presentation today or from both speakers. For Sheikh Shokia, I've been learning from him every day actually, it's not only today. Um, and uh, I want to comment on a few points quickly, uh, just to, in case I could not come in, if, if I cannot come in the discussion in the evening. Um, Sophia mentioned a very important point like that, the fact that woman is a subject, not an object, that we need to go back to the our universal principles, not to be absorbed in these legal details without looking at the uh, big picture. Um, surrendering to God together, you know, coaching the verse in Surah Naml, wa aslamtu ma'a Sulaymana illahi rabbil alameen. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's, that's the point, is to surrender to Allah Azawajalla together. But I think also there is need to some minimum level of conflict, because it's something creative sometimes, whether conflict between male and female, or between social class, etc. It's sometimes it's, it's creative, that's what uh, Iqbal called conflict leading to mutual adjustment. Sometimes very important, and that's the idea of mudaha that I talk about as one of the core values core political value uh, in Islam. Uh, another very important point is rejecting tradition without knowing it well, without making it. But that's something very common, unfortunately, today, whether among, among celibates or among um, secularists, those who want to reject the tradition but without, without making enough effort to understand the tradition and putting it within the context of time and space. There are many layers of interpretation, true, um, I used to say uh, something I used to repeat in Arabic for my students of history of religion that that if you have overconfidence in the explanation that will be um, a curtain between you and the original text so we should not give too much credit to explanations and to interpretations. Uh, if we do that, if so, we just simply are putting obstacle between our mind and the original message. Uh, another point is uh, that in reality, when women suffer, everybody else suffers in the society, whether men or children, and. Uh, 
I have some personal stories on these. Uh, something paradox sometimes uh, when people get obsessed with legal details uh, at the expense of these very important principles. I know uh, a female who's close relative. She was, I think, about 21 years old. She was about to get married. And her family are looking for the phone number of her dad to ask his permission, which is fine for me. So, so I don't believe it's necessary, but it's fine. It's opinion of some scholar. The problem is her dad never saw her. He divorced her mom when she was pregnant. She, he never saw this girl. He never supported her. He never met her in, in his life. And they are living in the same country. And at 20 years old, she went to get married. They are looking for his phone, and uh, they are waiting days. And no, we cannot do it until we get permission from this dad. <laughs> uh, this is, you know, when people get obsessed with legal details, and they sacrifice the principles, very important principles. Last point, uh, talking about slave women and the, this free sexual access in some history and also interpretation of many scholars. I'd like you just to see what Muhammad Asad said about this in his comment, the message of Quran, because he has a very interesting interpretation on this, uh, that even a slave girl cannot be married without, without a consent, must be married first. There is no such free access. Uh, and also, and this, he's explaining the verse in Surah Al-Nisa, فَنْكِحُوهُ النَّبِي إِذْنِ أَهْلِهِنْ Marry them. Uh, you know, free, free sexual access to, <laughs> to slave. <laughs> yes, exactly. Please. Yes. Yes. Yeah, but, but he said, وَمَلَكَتَ إِمَانُكُمْ Our here is, is the meaning of العطف work. And, and uh, I understand, you know, we're talking about the same verses. The, the issue is about the meaning of the verses. Actually, he's not talking about this specific verse. He's talking about the verse in Surah An-Nisa. Uh, Marry them with the, uh, with the permission of the of their families. This is about so, marriage, not about... Yeah, but what he's saying, this is not for a slave girl owned by someone else. Mm -hmm. Even a slave girl owned by the person who went to marry her. Because Quran did not say, it's a slave girl owned by someone else. So anyway, I, I just like to see those comments of Muhammad They are very interesting and the, it's, uh, it shows that there is always debate about many things that we think it's not debatable, but... Uh, but I'm yeah, yeah, exactly what I'm saying. It's debatable, and that uh, Muhammad said has some insight on this that deserve to be uh, seen. Uh, excluding women from sacred space, this is uh, just remind me of a funny story when I was working for Islamic Center in Texas. And we have to uh, remodel the woman prayer room. Uh, one of the uh, leading brothers in the community came to me and he was very frustrated. Where woman, he said, where woman will pray during these two weeks of working, you know, this maintenance in their space? I said, well, they will, they will pray here with us in the same room. He said, how come? I told him, look, brother, do you mind if, if we follow Sunnah for just two weeks and <laughs> pray together? Let us follow Sunnah for two weeks and then we go back to this bid'ah that we were doing. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shakiti. Thank you, everybody. And thank special thanks to, Dr., uh, to Sister uh, Sakhia and Sister uh, Safiya. Uh,